Hello, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. Welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Today, I thought it was about time we tackled Christmas because it's going to be here before we know it. So I'm going to use some Christmas stamps of ours, beautiful stamps, and uh, show you a couple of techniques as well. So even if you don't celebrate Christmas, maybe you'll be able to extract something from the techniques. Uh, I want to show you um, some stencils that we've made. Uh, these are Christmas ones. There are four in the set. Do go to the website and have a look. I'm using the holly and the star here just to show you the techniques. And then we've also got some fabulous Christmas rounds. I'm going to use Santa and the, and the Noel uh, stockings. These are lovely. Again, we've got four. So we've got four stencils, four stamps, and they're all very interchangeable, very beautiful. So what I wanted to do first was take a look at the 7x7 seven seven stencil. Automatically we think we have to use 7x7 seven seven card. Not so. I think that sometimes just a hint looks great too. So for example, if we only use this part of the stencil on black card, I think this will look rather good. So if I just bring that into there, I reckon that will look sharp. And then what I want to do is take some low tack masking tape and just attach it at the back so that I know it's not going to slide around when I start working. So I've put that on there like so. That's, that's good enough. And then I'm going to just attach the stencil at the top here also. And then I'm going to pull the paste through here. Right, I use the grunge paste, Paper Artsy, great stuff. And I couldn't find my spatula, so I'm using my bone folder. Mm -hmm. Make do and mend. Works perfectly, because what I need to do is deposit a little bit of this grunge paste around the edge like so. So we're just going to add some grunge paste here. You can't really over egg it because at the end of the day you're just going to scrape it all back in like so. And then when we've done this we're going to pop it in water. So we've got a spreader and then I'm just going to, let's just catch this grunge paste and then I'm just going to drag it through where I want it to be. There we go, it's that easy. And then I'll just drop that back in there. I'll pop my spreader in the water. I've done, it's done its job already, you see. So then I'm just gonna take this off here carefully. Ugh. I do like grunge paste though, I have to say. And then we'll lift it off here too, like so. Wunderbar. So we've got our partial, see that looks so nice, doesn't it? And then what we'll do is, I've got a little bit more on there than I, I should have, but I'm just gonna drop that into the um, water, you see. I could only find one. Can you imagine this whole building? I can only find one holly stencil. Never mind. That's why we're now going to progress to the stars. But I just wanted to show you how neat this looks. Now this takes about, Ooh, 20 minutes to dry, good quality cardstock so it doesn't buckle too much. So we'll put that one to one side for now. And then I'm just going to lose this because it's got some grunge paste on it. And while that's drying, let's take a look at the centre of the stamp. Obviously, this is a wreath, isn't it? So we've got these lovely rounds that could sit in there perfectly. Now what I want to use is a piece of the other card. Remember I always say it's fantastic for stamping on. Right, and what I want to use is an archival black ink pad to do the job. So I'm just gonna ink up my stamp nicely. Um, the, the archival black versa fine also gives you a really great impression too. So we want a nice sharp black solid image. So this should work nicely. And I'm just using a piece of the, the other card because we're going to cut these discs out. So we don't need to use a great big piece of A5. We can just use a panel. So I want to press hard. You know, often we buy big stamps because we think uh, the bigger the stamp, the more coverage, the faster it will go. But actually bigger stamps require 
a little bit more pressure, a little bit more time. So let's check it out, see what we've got. It's good enough for me. And one more thing. Um, if, for example, you do this and then you see there's a little imperfection, like on my O, there's a little tiny bit. I had something going on on my stamp. Look, um, always check. Too late now. Um, rather than try and go back over it and spoil it, the trick is to take one of these Micron pens and then just jazz up, just correct, like so, and no one will ever know. I mean, if you can't read Noel, then you might want to have a second run at it. But no, normally, a little pen correction will do the job. Right, you see? And once we've got this, then what we can do is um, cut this out. Now, I want to show you something. If, I, if you look at grunge paste, grunge paste isn't white. It's, it's kind of creamy. And so even if you look at this, you can see this is very white and this is very creamy and it won't look good. So we could either start with a creamy card or we can just, just change the tone slightly. I would, I'm going this way because I've got the stuff to do that rather than go out and try and find some cream card. So here, here's a brush and here's a distress ink pad called Antique Linen. Right. So we're going to use our brush and we're going to get rid of loads of ink before we begin and then we're just going to start dusting through and you'll see that it changes the colour. It's not noticeable until you hold it up against the grunge paste and then you'll see it for sure. So we're just going to change the colour very slightly. We're going to cut the disc out anyway so don't worry about the edges. It's not about the edges, it's about the centre. And so we can just come round and when it's cut out we could even distress it a bit round the edges here, you know, just by adding a bit more. That's one of the loveliest things about the brushes is they do go, they swirl. You can swirl with them like so. But you'll see in a heartbeat how different, look, the difference between white and antiqued, if you like. Antique linen, the clue's in the name, antiqued. So once we've done that, let's take a look here. This is one that's already dry. Okay, same thing, look. So this is already dry. And, and here's one, for example, this is, I wanted to show you a different picture. This is our Santa, he's rather lovely too. And you can see he's white and he's been antiqued. So again, I'm sure you'll agree with me, this blends much better than that, look. Get it? Good. Right, now the next thing we want to do is we can take our stencil. Remember I said I've only got one that's still dirty. Okay, let's have a look. So I've dropped it in water straight away. So just bear with me a minute while I clean it. You see, so I've just got to wash this and then use it again because I need a clean stencil to be able to do the next job. Right, here we go. So as soon as you've used grunge paste on a stencil, the trick is to Drop it in water, they come up like new when you do that, you see? Let's do that. Right. Wipe it on your best dress. She you didn't put your apron on. Tell you what though, I found a fantastic cup when I was in New York recently. How about that? One day at a time. Yep. That came home. <laughs> right, now let's have a look. So that's all nice and clean now. If I want to add, this is what I was trying to show you. If I want to add a little bit of colour to the stencil, then the trick, it takes longer to try and line up the stencil. There you go. I made a little dot so that I would know where it was. But you see, you have to line up the stencil with the grunge paste again, once it's dry, like so. And then you can add some colour. So, for example, we've got choices now. I'm going to take, let's say, because it's obviously it's holly, so we're going to take bottle green, which is lovely, and just add a little tiny dash of bottle green. This is very dark, and you know what I always say, you can always add it, but you can't take it away. So if I want to add a little bit of green, here we go. I like the colour bottle for Christmas, but there are so many other beautiful colours. Don't take my word for it, check them out. Right, now let's have a look. So we're just going to add a little bit of green here and there. 
If you wanted to be much more specific, you could go in with pens as well, like distress markers, they work on grunge paste. Um, Pro markers, they work on grunge paste. Uh, the Spectrum Noir pencils, they work on grunge paste. They're, it's so nice, acrylic paint works on grunge paste, obviously. So you see, you can use so many different media to a actually add color, nice. So we've got a little bit of green, let's have a look. Cool, doesn't that look good? See, you just don't need loads. So we just add a little bit more like so. See, and then you just line up the stencil, add a bit more, hold tight so it doesn't slide around underneath. Okay, you get the picture anyway. Nice. Now here, of course, we've got red berries. So we could go into, I'm gonna use Spectrum Noir because I want to get into the actual berry, don't I? And that would be quite, I think it would be easier to do it with a pencil. So for example, now I can add, I'm just showing you different options, a little bit of red, like so, on the berry, okay? So that's another possibility. I'm, I'm concentrating just on one side because what that does is it gives it the kind of the illusion of sh light and shade, you see? So I'm just adding a little bit of the redness from the pencil around one side. Um, do you know what might be even better would be, um, well, Spectrum Wise, this is pretty cool. Um, the Distress Markers, I bet they'd be good as well. I just haven't got a red one on the table here. But there you go, try it out, see what you've got, use your stash. Right, but you see, doesn't that look cool? Already it's starting to come together really nicely. And the other thing that looks really lovely when you do this is if you've got a white pen, this makes it really pop. I'll show you what I mean. If you take a white pen and you just add a couple of dots, like so, and you'll see sometimes the white soaks into the porous black card, in which case you just have to go back over it again. But just check this out. A good friend of mine, Jo, um, she uses this technique a lot. And on black, it does look so nice. So thanks, Jo, for the inspiration on this one. Doesn't that look sharp? Look, just a couple of little dots. There you go. And straight away, You've used just a partial part, you've just used a partial area of a stencil. Yeah. Doesn't it look good? And then you see, we can take our, uh, for example, our Father Christmas. Let's take him. He's already been cut out. And he can sit in there. Now we could cut him off here if we wanted to. So let's say we're going into mass production, it's Christmas. We've got the four stencils, we've got the four different rounds. There are, there's a dove as well, which is beautiful. And then there's a chimney, which is gorgeous. Um, but say you've got these four different stencils and then you've got the four discs, the stamps. So you mix and match them all and then you color them in. And then when you've done that, you can decide whether you're gonna use a part, an, just a part of it or, or here, for example, Here's one where we've used a whole, a whole thing. Look, we've used the stars. And then you can decide whether you want to put him in there and whether you want to color him in, whether you want to do all your Christmas cards, all tone in tone, all in one color, you know? That looks good too. It's, it's all a matter of, of um, choice really, isn't it? So let's take him for example. We could color him in. I don't want to waste your time showing you how to colour in because I think we can leave that for a rainy day. But for example, Santa, he, he needs a little bit of red. So I need to, I need to make sure I have the same, the same tone of red as I had around here. I used cranberry for this area, cranberry adirondack to go through there. And now I'm using a really cool Spectrum Noir pencil because it sits nicely. And obviously this one has already been antiqued, if you like, with the Distress um, ink pad, antique linen. And you see how you can just add now, add some shadow. Just give me a couple of minutes, listen to some nice Christmas music while I just sort his hat out, okay? <laughs> Okay, 
Let's have a look. I haven't completely finished colouring in, but I'm sure you get the picture. So I can take my disc, for example, and I can apply my image beautifully to the centre, like so, and you can see that the colours complement each other beautifully. Or I can take this little guy and I can pop him in to here, and you'll see if I cut this off here, let's just give you the illusion that it's disappeared. You see? Just by placing him on there and possibly adding a little tiny bit of matching green somewhere in the picture, maybe on the teddy bear, who knows. But it's very cute, it's about as cute as I get, but I, I like it a lot and I think that there are lots of little tricks and techniques in there from grunge paste to colouring grunge paste to using part of a stencil, um, lots of ideas, do go to the website and have a look at the gallery because the design team have made so many beautiful Christmas cards with this particular collection. So thanks for joining me and do leave a comment. I always like to hear what you have to say and I shall see you next Tuesday. Bye bye now.